Living our suburban life Moving over the sea to sky Are we chasing a dream? I guess in time we will see When we're living the sky life Living the sky life Hello, I'm Willie. And I'm Sarah. And this is Jack Spaniels, a little dog in the back of the car. And we live in Kirkcaldy, which is a little town in Fife. And there's lots of amenities there, big supermarkets, etc. Anyway, we're making the move to the Highlands because Sarah's an artist, I'm a musician, and we feel we'll fit into that community better than where we are in a bigger town. And we just love it there. I mean, Scotland's gorgeous, but Sky in particular is absolutely stunning. We've just been to view a property in Uig on the north coast of Sky, and we love it. So we're going to go and make an offer on that and see if it goes through. And it'll be our first offer on a property. We've seen three now. This is a proper adventure, a massive change of lifestyle for all of us. A van just pulled up beside us and we're talking about going to live our adventure. And quite funny. Have a look at this. I'll just turn you around. Don't know if you can read that. I'll try and zoom in. Live your adventure. <laughs> what a coincidence. We don't know if we will survive the move. If we can cope with life in the Highlands, it's going to oh, be very different. Have to go back with our tail between our legs. Yeah. Not talking so... to you, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Work's not going to be a problem for us, hopefully, in the Highlands because we both work from home. I'm a painter and I have a YouTube channel about painting and walking in the Scottish countryside. And I'm a musician, but I've also got a treasure hunting channel which might be more challenging because I do a lot of bottle digging and I do a lot of metal detecting. I'm going to have to leave my permissions behind in Fife. If you are new here, links to our YouTube channels are probably in the video description below so you can see what we get up to in our day-to-day -day lives. What we've got to do now is go back to Fife, speak to the state agents and we're going to make an offer on the property. So yeah, you're welcome to join us on this journey and see if we manage to do it. Make the dream come true. It's the dream. Let's see if the dream becomes a reality. Hello and good morning. We're back in Fife and Kirkcaldy. Last night we decided that we really want to make an offer on this house. Sarah's making me a coffee right now, I don't know if you can hear that in the background. It's about quarter to nine and we're going to phone the estate agents in Sky, see if the owners have got a price in mind to take the property off the market so we can make an offer. I'm going to phone the estate agents now. Hey Jack. Yes. And, uh, and see what they say. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye. I just spoke to the estate agent and they've got three notes of interest and she thinks there's going to be another offer today from someone else. I did say to a little family, um, we're not intending to develop it or make it into an Airbnb. She's going to speak to the seller uh, this afternoon and then she's going to call me. She's going to say to him, look, is there a price that you've got in mind? If they have, they'll get back to me and let me know. She did say it might go to a closing day. So now we have to wait until this afternoon to see what the seller says and see what the estate agent says. The waiting game begins now. Tick tock. <laughs> Sarah's very busy. She's posting things all over the world to our Etsy customers, people that buy bottles like these and also her prints of her artworks. So uh, she's being quite frugal with the print stick over there. I'm looking at her and uh, I'll show you what I'm looking at. Trying to be frugal here because we're moving the sky, you know? We don't want to waste it, folks. And environmentally friendly. Very so. groovy. Very groovy. That's what the viewers want to see, isn't it, viewers? I'm finished with my parcels for now and that's all finished, so that's ready to be recycled. Excellent. Done. Just wait until we're sending all these from the local post office in Sky. Yeah. I've got the ukulele out because I'm writing the theme tune for this new YouTube channel. I can't actually play the ukulele very well, so it just sounds cool though, but um, yeah, there's going to be ukulele in it, folks. You heard it here first. That's a G on the ukulele, apparently. It looks like a D on a guitar. It's the same shape. Anyway, this is what I've got so far. La 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 Live in the sky life La 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 is that a seven? That's a seven. <laughs> it's much easier on the guitar, actually. We're going with our hearts this time. 
Moving over the sea to sky, that's got to be in. That's the seven two, seven chord. If you're a musician, you know what I mean. And if not, it just sounds cool. <laughs> it's actually pretty nerve wracking waiting to hear from someone. It's been only about an hour and a half, I suppose, but still. She says it's gonna be this afternoon. I haven't even had my breakfast yet. Uh, I'm just sort of looking out the window and uh, writing a theme tune for a YouTube channel that doesn't exist yet. <laughs> yeah, the wait continues anyway. This is what our life looks like right now, it's just uh, bags and uh, packing stuff and chucking stuff everywhere and up and down the sky looking at properties. We're about to hang out the tent that we used, like these two. Jack's gonna help. Jack is gonna help. Are you gonna help? Are you gonna help, Jack? Me paw. Give me a paw. Please, Who's a good paw. boy? You better give him a biscuit now. I don't know what to film, I'm used to filming things coming out of the ground, not uh, my house and uh, my normal life, I suppose. He is getting his treats, folks. What is it? That's for before. Oh! Paw? Other paw? High five! Oh, you missed! High five! Good boy! Salmon treats. I want some salmon treats. I haven't even had my breakfast yet. Wait! Good boy! Okay, that's the tent hanging up. We do this a lot now because we go up and down the sky and camp so it saves us some money. So we're not hemorrhaging money on Airbnbs. <laughs> but it means camping and this is the reality of it. Monday mornings are always really busy. I go and answer all the comments that came in through the night because our videos go out on Sunday nights. With loads of comments here. So now we've got to go and uh, talk to them. Welcome to Shabby Road Studios, up there. I've finished the song, I've finished writing the song, and now I'm just going to put down the acoustic guitar, so let's do that. I've got click in my ear. Okay, apologies in advance for the ukulele because I'm not great at it, but I'll put it in anyway, see how it sounds. Okay, let's get the click going. Okay, next up is the bass guitar, and the bass guitar is plugged in, so I don't need headphones, you'll actually hear this, you'll hear the click as well. Let's do that. Okay, I got headphones on again, because I'm doing clicks, finger snaps, like that. And now, egg shakers. And finally, the vocal. We're leaving our suburban life, moving over the sea to sky. Now, let's have a listen to it all together. And that's the first draft. I'll probably do more to it, but that's the sort of rough vibe of the song. I haven't bothered to time things because you can cut things up and put them all in perfect time, but I'm not doing that. I want it to sound a little bit ramshackle, so that's how it is. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Okay, so the next morning it's Tuesday and I just got a phone call from the estate agent on Sky and they said that it's going to a closing date on Thursday this week. So a couple of days. I know there's another offer and there's three notes of interest so I'm going to go and see if Sarah's heard any of this. I don't know if she has or not. But let's go and go to our office where she's painting. Hello. Did you hear any of that? What? Okay, so the closing day is going to be 12 o'clock on Thursday this week. Wow, well, that's yeah. quick. Yeah. Okay. What are you painting? Uh, some wild bilberries. Bilberries. Cool. <laughs> oh, bilberries. Anyway, so that's exciting. Yeah, it's good. Go, it'll, it'll decide it. It will decide it. So, so we just have to figure out what we're, what we're going to put in. Absolutely, I have to go and engage the solicitor now. We're making an offer. We don't know what it is yet. We'll have a chat and then uh, come back on camera. Sarah's stopped painting now, so we're sitting yeah. having a chat about how much we want to put in as an offer. We have a figure in mind, we're not going to say that on camera. You excited? Yes. I'm very excited, very nervous, <laughs> very, very, 
very, very, very, very nervous. But uh, Jack is unconcerned. Jack is so chilled out, he is a recumbent spaniel, which is a great name for a pub. Anyway, so that's where we are. We're going to put an offer in and it's exciting and it's terrifying and it's uh, the adventure, isn't it? Yeah, we've just got to go for it. We've got to go for it. Okay, we've made an offer through our lawyer and it's gone in. So we'll find out this Thursday. This is Tuesday. This is going to be one tense week. Also, I've been in touch with the estate agent that came to see our house a few months ago when we decided to put it on the market. So this house will be going on the market right away, um, assuming that our offer is accepted on Thursday. We may find out on Thursday. We may have to wait until Friday morning. So we'll have to get through Thursday night, uh, not knowing, potentially. Very tense, very stressed, but also very excited to see what happens. So fingers crossed. Let's see where this goes. <laughs> Wish us luck! Yeah. <laughs> Had a really long day yesterday, working on all the stuff for the house during the day and speaking to lawyers and estate agents, etc, etc. Worked really late because I didn't do it during the day, obviously because I was dealing with the house stuff, so that was fun. And then couldn't sleep last night. So I lay there until about two o'clock in the morning, just sort of chucking myself around the bed. Um, and then up at 7.30 this morning, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go and de-stress. So I'm gonna go mushroom picking today. I'm looking for seps. I'm seeing on the socials just now that loads of them are being found in this area of Scotland. So I'm gonna go looking for wild mushrooms. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna put that in the video because it's what I do to de-stress. And this is sort of lifestyle kind of thing. So that's what I'm gonna do now. in the woods and uh, I'm after mushrooms and I just found one at the side of the path there and this is exactly what I'm looking for this is a sep mushroom or porcini mushroom or penny bun whatever you want to call it I've got a chef friend in Ullapool called Dave so if you're watching Dave hi and I've been promising him some seps we've had a really really hot year so far so there's been no mushrooms they need a bit of moisture and we've not had it. So we've got it now and I'm hoping for a really good haul today for Dave. Ones like this where they're a little bit gnarled, I'll probably keep myself. But the nicer ones are going to other pool. All right, let's do this. I just bumped in a lovely Latvian couple. Uh, they've just got a load of mushrooms. They've got, I don't know, probably 20 kilos between them. They're carrying them uh, between them in two huge bags. So hopefully there'll still be some for me. Chatting ain't gonna help. Let's get foraging. This is the fly agaric mushroom, the fairy tale mushroom. Great stories behind this mushroom. Um, and there's a lot of them around. They're also an indicator for seps. Yeah, that means that probably out there, there'll be a lot more seps for me today. Fingers crossed. Check these monsters out. I actually came in here because I was looking for chanterelles. This patch is chanterelles. The bit I'm going to is the pinewood over there where the seps usually are. But look at this, they're massive. Absolutely huge. Now, yeah, they're spongy, which means they've probably been attacked by maggots. So I'm probably just gonna leave these ones. They're too big anyway. I'm looking for ones that are sort of smaller than my fist. Anyway, look at these things, they're amazing. I'll take some pictures for you to see. The forest floor is covered in these, and these are false chanterelles, which look very much like normal chanterelles. Not sure if that's a sep or not, it's very light for the top of it is. No, it's not. What is it? Actually, no, it is a sep. A few steps over and two more. Amazing. Another one, just checking to see how spongy it is. Yeah, it's a little bit spongy. Yeah, it's a little bit too big for me. I'll leave that to drop its spores. Incidentally, you don't harm the organism at all by taking mushrooms. If you take a tomato off a tomato plant, the tomato plant doesn't die, it continues to grow. And uh, the mycelium is what's under the ground. Mushrooms don't have roots or anything like that. So taking that doesn't do any harm, but it doesn't harm either to let it drop spores and uh, potentially spread the mycelium a little bit further. This is a false chanterelle. 
and the way you tell the difference between a true chanterelle and a false is that this has proper gills rather than the ridges that you get on a, on a chanterelle. Also, if you break the middle, it's hollow and it's a sort of orangey colour. Chanterelles, true chanterelles, on the inside is white and it's much more sturdy than this. So yeah, this is a false chanterelle. I think they're slightly toxic, but I certainly wouldn't eat them. True chanterelles, on the other hand, are delicious. Don't normally find too many of these in this wood, but this is a chanterelle. It's a true chanterelle and you see the difference. Underneath are ridges, not gills. And when you cut through the stem, it's white. If I cut it through the middle, it will be white all the way down. See that? And that's how you tell chanterelles from false chanterelles. So this is not a field guide, I'm not an expert. I just know enough so that I can eat them confidently. Check this out. Lovely little porcini. And his friend here. So many. Lovely. Gorgeous things. Look at this little guy. Hey, yeah. You're going to be someone's lunch down here as well. Oh wow, this is crazy. I've never seen this many seps in this wood. This is the most I've ever seen here. Absolutely amazing. Look at that. What a wee belter. This is the type that the chefs want. The wee stocky ones. Perfect like this. Even better if they're sort of shorter than that. But I'm looking around me and I'm not joking. I can just see mushrooms absolutely everywhere. This is mad. It's not normally like this, folks. This is really, really unusual to have this many. This one here is a really small one. That's perfect for chefs. That's what they want. They want them this size. Little baby emerger. That's a beauty. That's the best one so far. Cool. Let's keep getting them. There's another one here as well. Look, this is... Oh! Every time I look up, I see another one. It's absolutely crazy, folks. This is the best mushroom foray I think I've ever had. And uh, it just so happens to be, by pure coincidence, uh, in the first episode of this new channel. I'm not grumbling about that at all. This is what I want. Little emergers. Come on out, you come. Pop. Looks really small, but that is what the chefs want. Happy days. And I feel great, I feel excited, and I'm having a great time. I'm not thinking too much about the house, which was the point in this little mindfulness, I suppose. All right, little guy. Crawling away. I'm not going to do any harm, bud. You're fine. I think he was actually hiding underneath this mushroom. It's like being in some sort of fairy wonderland. I've never seen so many seps in one place. Including that one that I nearly stood on. It was right by my feet. <laughs> That's the mushroom version of me and Sarah. <laughs> Check that out for a haul. Just in that tiny little area. area. Well chuffed with these. With this one, it's easy to see why they call it a penny bun. That's the English name for it, the old English name for it. Look at that. Looks like a bread roll. And that's why they called it that. The Italians call them porcini and seps as well, there's loads of names for them. But uh, they're delicious, and they're awesome, and they're so much fun to find. Whew. Yeah, there are a lot of seps. Most of them are too far gone, but there's still loads of them that I can get. It's absolutely amazing every time I turn around. Seven, all at one spot. It is really peaceful and it's really exciting as well. Like you're just focused on what you're doing. You're not thinking of anything else at all, which is brilliant. I'm absolutely soaked. I don't know if you can see my shirt. Look, I'm soaking. And it's because the trees are wet. It's not actually raining, but it has been raining through the night. So I'm just getting absolutely soaked, but I don't care. This is just so much fun. I'm just going to keep going. I think I might have found the most perfect sep in the woods. Look at it, it's gorgeous. So this is the second hall. 
I've got to go back there now and get my bag. I'm leaving these here because I don't want to carry them anymore. So I'll go and get my bag, come back, put some in my bag, leave some in the basket, probably take them out my hat. Kind of wish I brought a bigger basket now. I can't pick anymore. I have literally no way of carrying them. That was fun. <laughs> Okay, I think I'm done here. All these will go to a good home. They'll all be used. They'll all be eaten. And I left about 20,000 times as much as I took. So that is a good haul for 2022. I'm very happy. Now to carry it all the way back to the car. Okay, here's the mushrooms at home. And the next time you see them, they'll be cleaned and sliced. There we go. All cleaned, all sliced, and in the dehydrator. So when you see it again, they'll be done. In eight hours. And here they are, all lovely and dry. Another season's mushrooms in the dehydrator done. For those of you that don't know, Dirty Secrets of Scotland, which is the other channel that I've got, is about treasure hunting in Scotland. And one of the things I do is bottle dig, and I find uh, Victorian old bottles, things like this. Um, however, they come in the ground obviously very dirty. So what I do is I put a bit of um, this budgie grit inside them, uh, after they've had a soak for a couple of days, and shake them. And it gets the, uh, the dirt out. It's probably the least glamorous part of bottle digging and treasure hunting, but Somebody's got to do this part as well. That's always going to be me. <laughs> this is a nice one, this. I'm not going to talk about all this kind of thing on uh, this new channel, although it has to obviously come into it because it is our lives at the minute. But uh, when we move to Sky, things will completely change. So this channel will evolve and you will see us grow as people and things change and our lives become totally different to how they are now, I imagine. But uh, yeah, so I just thought I'd mention that. I was just after I cleaned that bottle, I thought, you know what, I'm going to go back on and say that because it's so important. Right now, Dirty Secrets of Scotland, She Walks, She Paints, both our YouTube channels, they're very specific to the things that we do. Me, treasure hunting, Sarah, art and walking, and crafting as well, both of us. But this is gonna be completely different. There'll be a bit of that, but it's gonna evolve. You'll see it happen. We're excited about it, and we hope that you will be as well to join us on this huge adventure. So, cheers. Joking. <laughs> Morning, Jack. And yeah, you know that today is the day we find out if we get the house. Or maybe tomorrow, but we hope it's today. You look entirely unfazed. I think you're probably more focused on things like sausages. Or bacon. Or chicken. What do you think? Should we give you a little treat? Okay, it's D-Day and uh, we're going to find out hopefully today, the estate agent did say it might be tomorrow, but uh, we hope to be here today. It's 12 o'clock that the uh, offer goes in, fingers crossed, and see what happens. It's very nerve-wracking. I think they'll leave us in suspense until tomorrow. Personally. Yeah, I think they might do as well, but we'll see. Yeah. Just going to keep busy. We're going to keep busy, which is what I'm doing now. So I'm making some mushroom soup. It's my mum's birthday tomorrow. So I'm making some mushroom soup for my mum's birthday because that's her favourite soup in the world. From the wild so. mushrooms. That you from the wild you. mushrooms. Wild mushrooms, three ways. We had them for dinner last night. We made spaghetti bolognese with them and we're drying them as you've probably seen and we're making soup from them and that'll be them all gone, which is great. Um, there's a box of them going to my friend, the chef in Olipool, so um, we're just waiting for the courier for that as well. So it's actually mushrooms four ways and however many ways he makes them as well. So yeah. Mushroom he's Central. Mushroom Central. That isn't mushroom for anything else. <sighs> Sorry about that. Summers for about half an hour and that's it. Whiz it up and it's ready. You can put cream in it if you like. Okay, that's done. All whizzed up, ready to be served with some cream. Time for a taste. Chef perks. Even if I do say so myself, hmm, that's pretty nice. And the soup is ready. Time for lunch. That was delicious. And Jack's just come to see if he can get some of his mum's. No, Jack. You get your own food, pups.
Well, folks, we just got the word from the lawyer, and unfortunately, we were not successful on this property. So the search continues. Apparently, there was a huge gap between what we put forward and the other person. So we're thinking it's gone sky to create high. sky high. <laughs> so you've done it. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> Unintentional pun there. But yeah, so it's a shame. But you know, whatever's for you, I'll not go by you. My granny always used to say that. So keep upbeat, keep looking, and uh, we'll find the right place eventually. On to the next one. On to the next one. The saga continues. <laughs> Okay, so it's, it's three weeks later. We were a bit disappointed about the first house, as you can imagine. However, we thought, you know what? Let's try a different approach. So we looked into a lot of options, and one that sort of made most sense at the time was to build somewhere. Sarah looked into pricing, and it was gonna be at the top end or exceeding our budget. And there were a lot of uncertainties as well and variables that could move around pricing-wise, and we just can't afford it, basically. So we thought we'll wait till something really cool comes in the market and that happened on Thursday of this week. We contacted the estate agent. So we're going on another road trip tomorrow. We love a spontaneous road trip. We do love a spontaneous road trip. <laughs> so tomorrow's Sunday, we're going to Sky, yes, but we're going to meet the estate agent on Monday morning and then just see how it is. It looks amazing. It's in the south of the island this time rather than the north. We're really, really excited. Yeah, I think it's really important we go and see these houses in person. You can't tell enough about it from the pictures. So no. I'm a bit worried it's going to be a bit small because we've got a lot of hobbies and we have a lot of stuff. Yeah. Just excited to go see it and see the location and what it's actually like in person. It's a really good step. Definitely. So we're going there tomorrow and uh, see what happens. Well, we couldn't book anywhere that takes dogs at such short notice, so this little baby dog here can't come with us. He's going to stay with his grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure he's excited about that, though. Yes. You want to go see Grandma Granddad? Take that as a yes. Hey, Jack. 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 Hey, Jack. Jack Spaniels. Jack the dog. Is your name Jack? <laughs> Whose dog is this? <laughs> Jack. Mummy and Daddy are going away now. We're going away to Sky. And you're gonna stay with Granny and Granddad and be a good boy, is that right? Yeah, you're a good boy. <laughs> okay, time for us to go to Sky. Bye, pups. We're on the A9, the south of the A9. We're just leaving Perth uh, and we're on our way north. And we've done this so many times now with viewings on Sky. It just feels like a bit of a commute now. It's a nice journey. A long commute. <laughs> a long commute, five and a half hours. Um, you might be able to hear rattling in the back of the car. Now that rattling is actually uh, bottles, because I dig a load of bottles and I sell them to uh, our friend on Sky, who's an antique dealer. So we've got a load of bottles in the back, you can hear them ringing and rattling around. In our mushroom baskets. In our mushroom baskets, because we're going to go mushrooming again as well. So anyway, another adventure north. Hopefully we get a result this time that we're after. So yeah. Bye from Perth. We're in the Highlands. My favourite part of the journey. Coffee and cake. Just stopped for our lunch and uh, there's no seats inside so we're in the car. But well, that's fine. Yep. Have a nice lunch and uh, yeah, I'm not going to show you that though. So uh, we've just stopped at uh, Strathmashie or Patak Falls. We normally get out and walk about, especially when Jack Spaniels is here, but he's with his grandparents, as you know. So we're not going to get out and it's raining. Uh, so we're going to stay in the car and we're going to shamelessly put on some footage from the last time we were here.
just arrived at the uh, digs, but it's a bit rainy and a bit windy, so that's why I'm filming from the car. <laughs> Look at those gazebos. They dance then. Pub though. That's the island down in Castle. It's a bit windy like. We got the key folks. I've got the secret. I knew that was coming. <laughs> in the digs. Oh we're in a different room this time. We were in that room last time. We're getting used to this. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, we've got a sea view. Nice. Sort of. We got a street view last time. There's a boat over there. I love the wee breakfast setup. Yeah, it's nice in here. Nice and cozy and warm out of that wind, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about anyone else, right? But when you come into a hotel room, what's the first thing you do? For me, it's this. Get rid of the cushions. Why cushions? We don't need cushions. They're unnecessary. Now, I can jump on the bed. I like cushions. <sighs> there we are. That was a long drive. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> okay, so we just uh, went we across... We stir crazy in this room already. I'm going stir crazy. <laughs> we just went across the way to the pub and asked them um, if we could book a table for six o'clock. But we can't because the chef's off sick. So we're having to drive up to Balmacara. We're in Dorney and we're driving up to Balmacara for some food. So it's not too bad. Phoned up and got a book. So we've got something to eat tonight, which is good. The last time we were here, we had to drive to the chip shop in the Kyle of Loch Alsh, which took about 20 minutes each way. They might have to just sit in the car and eat. It's really difficult. If you want to come up here and eat, you have to make sure you make a booking in advance. Or just buy a house and then you can eat meals in your own house, which is the plan. Why didn't I think of that? That's what we're trying to do. How moody is that for a view? Don't know how that looks on the uh, screen, but it's pretty dramatic from here. Sarah was filming the rainbow, but I'm not sure if uh, she caught it. I think it's it. So that behind us is Aelandonan Castle and that behind us over there is the village of Dorney which is where we stayed last night and now we're going to Skye which is over there um, Yeah, so we're now going to see the house uh, we're going to go meander up through Broadford and whatnot in Skye then go over there and meet the estate agent They only really confirmed this morning because we emailed them and asked to confirm the appointment they never got back to us so we actually came up here in a bit of a uh, wing and a prayer but yeah, we are definitely confirmed. We're meeting the guy at the place at 12 o'clock. So. It started raining, so we're going to get back in the car.
on there. Okay, we've just seen the house and it's absolutely lovely. It's quite small and it's quite remote. So those two things are making us a little bit like slightly apprehensive. Um, but we did want this. We did want to be in a remote area and it is that. And there's water out the front. I could fish right outside the front of the building. It's gorgeous. And there's a walk, a woodland walk across from it that goes all the way into like an area of sky that we really love. So I really love it. I love you? it. I love the house. The remoteness scares me. I'm a, I'm a city girl, born mm. and bred. So this is a, a huge, huge change for me. I think it would take a lot of adjusting, but... Why I? <laughs> why I pet? <laughs> <laughs> but that, again, that is, that's what we wanted. We can get chickens. We're going to sleep on it anyway. We've talked about this before we came on camera, of course. So we're going to sleep on it, but we think we think we're going to make an offer at this point. But how much? We don't know yet. <laughs> no, but we'll, well, actually we won't tell you that either. <laughs> no, we won't be telling you that. It's exciting and scary, scary and awesome all at the same time. <laughs> and uh, that's it for now. It's hard to believe looking around here because it's stunningly beautiful but this is the site of the Battle of Glen Shiel which took place in 1719. It was the Jacobites versus the government forces. The Jacobites lost. One of the soldiers that was fighting for the Jacobite army was a certain Rob Roy McGregor. You may have heard of him. Anyway, it's lovely. I'll just show you around here. Um, very tragic, sad story in such a beautiful, stunning surrounding. back to Fife now after viewing the house but we thought we'd stop off at our favourite mushroom spot and look for some chanterelles. The bonus about being in the Highlands. Beautiful chanterelles. I should probably get some now. See us picked loads already. Not a great haul from this spot. Good for tonight's supper though. Normally this spot there's a lot more than that, that's pretty bad for here, so uh, yeah, I'm not going to go any further, i just go back to the car now. But it was good to stretch our legs and just get out into nature for a bit. I've been in the car a lot in the last couple of days, so yeah, okay, that was fun. Back to the car! This is how you know your girlfriend is awesome. So I do the most of the driving, just because the Highlands is quite challenging to drive in. And Sarah prefers it when I do it. So anyway, um, I'm now driving down towards Fife and uh, we stop in Dunkeld and I get some beer and Sarah does the last little bit of the drive so I can relax before I get home and just have a can of lager which is really kind and I love it and her. <laughs> Champion driver here doing the last stint. It's the hardest part. To give our chauffeur a little bit of a break at the end of the long drive there and back. What a legend. What a legend. Right everyone, so we're back in Fife, it's the next morning. We decided overnight to put an offer in verbally. So I called the estate agent and asked if the seller would take a price based on what we think it will sell for. And uh, we're hoping it doesn't go to our closing date. Yeah. The estate agent was really lovely, he's gone to call the seller and then we'll find out hopefully today if uh, they're going to take it off the market for that price. Fingers crossed and the anxiety happens again. <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, here we are again, but uh, hopefully this time we'll get the result. But whatever happens, you'll find out. You excited? Yes. I am. Nervous? Very terrified. <laughs> here we go again. Here we go again. Fingers yeah. crossed. <laughs> We've got a bit of news and uh, Sarah's going to tell you. Yep, just had a call from the estate agents in Skye and looks like we're moving to Skye. <laughs> <laughs> we had our offer accepted and we're moving to Skye. This is insane. This is like the biggest change in our lives we could possibly yeah. have. This is Huge. like our, going to a rural community from like a little 
urban town near Edinburgh. It's like an insane difference. And I can't get my head around it. I'm shaking like a leaf as well. One of the things on my other channel called Dirty Secrets of Scotland that I do when I get something exciting happens, when I find something exciting, is a dance. And if this wasn't a reason to dance, I don't know what it is. Let's do this. Let's do it. <laughs> Living our suburban life, moving over the sea to sky. Are we chasing a dream? I guess in time we will see when we're living the sky life. Living the sky life. So we donuts at the level. Donuts? Out of you sitting in the fashion district. Sit there! So I can see you're obviously tired. Passenger seat. Passenger seat, are you Sharon Connery? <laughs> so that behind us. Oops. I'm about to fall off a rock. Don't knock it over. I'm actually filming. <laughs> Bless you! <laughs> <laughs> it's been a whirlwind already. Mm.